BTO, Muskegon's 100.9. They are taking care of business. It is 8.07 on your Wednesday morning. Sunshine in the forecast today. It's going to be uh, rain showers tonight and tomorrow. Rain showers continue. Those could be uh, starting to get mixed with snow as early as this weekend and next week when we are going to get an Arctic blast, they're saying. And uh, things are going to get really cold around here really quick. Now, we've been talking a little bit this morning about the USS Silversides, and it resides down in the Muskegon Channel. If you've never been there, I'm telling you, this is a national treasure, and it's right here in our channel. I have got Frank Marzak, who is uh, the Associate Director of the Silversides Museum. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Andy. And, and I'm going to butcher this last name, Peggy, so give it to me one more time. Peggy? Maniatis. Maniatis. All right, and you are the curator of the museum mm -hmm. down there in the yes. channel. Do you... Frank, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about the history of the LST-393. Or not the LST, the Silversides. We were talking about the LST because my dad was on one back okay. in the day. I got confused. Tell us a little bit about the Silversides. Easy to tell because it's a question that often asked. And uh, the Silversides did serve in World War II, one of the su very successful submarines. Only one fatality uh, after the war. It was decommissioned. It uh, made its way eventually to Chicago to be associated with the Great Lakes Naval Training Base. Um, at some point, they said, okay, enough of that. Navy would get rid of it. The city of Chicago picked it up, beginning to make a tourist attraction out of it. Mm -hmm. And it did for quite a few years. It did do that. And then it was uh, starting to be let go. And even some vandals gone on and did some damage and things like this, which was not good. And then between politics and money, uh, it was going to be uh, turned into razor blades. That's, really? that's the usual term when a uh, ship is going to be scrapped. Mm. And a group in this community back in the early 80s, mid-80s, said uh, we can't let this happen. And uh, they made and found a way to raise money to bring it to Muskegon and was here in August of 1987. So. I, I have been on the Silver Sides a number of times. I, I am fascinated by everything that's on that ship and everything that it's done. I mean, you walk through it, and, it, you know, for, for all the technology we have today and everything that you... If you take it back to when that ship was built and see everything that went into it and all the meters, I mean, you feel like you're walking through a rocket at some, in some places, don't you? You, you do, and the fact there, the term computer is even used uh, with an instrument on that ship that really? I believe was used to guide the torpedoes, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. But the term computer, and that ship was made in 1940-41. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's got some age on it, but computers back then. Talk a little bit about the, the ship now. I know there, there are a multitude of things that people can do. I know kids have sleepovers on it. Oh, yeah. I know that. Uh, but do, do you honestly think, Frank, that the, the, the ship gets the attention it deserves for the historical significance that it holds? Let me put it this way. The quality of that is absolutely yes when people find it. Yeah, right. It is a common term we hear of, of uh, gosh, we didn't even know you were out here and matters like that. However, in the last couple of years, uh, with the lecture series that Peg will talk about, uh, I think we become a, a, a known name and uh, the attraction and attention is out there. So uh, we still have a lot to do. Uh, we track our uh, audience where they come from, and many from southeast, yeah, southeast Michigan, really? Illinois, Indiana. Um, regrettably, not as much West Michigan in general really? as, as we would think would be there. We have people that come all the way to see us from Germany. We had a couple from Israel last year. We've had them from all over the world, and sometimes I think we're the best kept secret in our own community. And that's what we're trying to change. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. is is the perception of what this thing is, and and, and really what an honor and, and treat it is to have here in Muskegon, the, the uh, Silver Sides. And even the uh, U.S. Coast Guard McLean, that's a 1927 sh 27 ship that sits behind it, that has its own illustrious history, yeah. and uh, kids and adults can sleep on that as well. We can sleep about a, over 100 on a, on a given weekend. Is that right? And we're busy almost every weekend with sleepovers from all over, a lot of scouts, of course, sure. church groups, things like that. Schools. Now, do, mm -hmm. do schools come down to tour this ship as well? well? Do, do, does that happen throughout the year? Not as much as we would like. Really? But, uh, they do. Yeah. They do. Mm -hmm. Last I mean, why May, do we had a wonderful large group come oh, yeah. through of students every week for almost the entire month of May. Yeah. And it has a lot to do with World War II falls in the curriculum. Curriculum, because when most schools start their education, you know, their history classes in the beginning of the year, they start with either the Revolutionary War or they start with prehistory. So by the time they're making it to World War II, it's in May. Yeah. 
And then they come. I, you know what? Yeah. That should be required for every school in Muskegon County to at some point come down and tour the Silver Sides. Let me uh, give a plug to Peg and the uh, Muskegon Community Foundation, which supported yeah. the uh, effort for about, I don't know, a couple hundred students. We had students. a couple hundred students yeah. come through, and um, with the support of the Community Foundation, they were able to take a tour of the Silver Sides and the museum, and then to take what we call our subtech class, where they learn about how torpedoes work, how a periscope works, what neutral buoyancies, what it is to make a submarine go down, and how does it come back up? Yeah. How did they breathe when they were under the sea? How did they put up with each other well, for months on end while they were down? Yeah, only 79 <laughs> only guys. Only 79 of them. On one, oh, man. That's, you know, I, I look back, and you know, when, I, when I was a kid, I thought about doing the Navy, and then you, 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 the idea of a submarine... But as you get a little older, you realize the sacrifice and commitment that it took oh, to be yeah. on board a submarine. Yeah. Yeah. It took a very yeah. special person very to be able to person. go down there and stay that long. And when you think about the submarine losses during World War II, you just didn't lose one man or two men. Oftentimes, the entire sub would be lost, and so you'd be losing 80 men at a yeah, time. Yeah, one depth charge, and that was all there was to that. Yeah. Yep. Scary yeah. stuff. Very, very scary. scary. Yeah. Now, with the, sh the, sh the ship is right there in the channel. Everybody knows that. At least we hope they do. But the museum is also off to the side, and do people stop and, and tour both, or is it just more like, hey, we just want to go run through the ship and take a look, and that's how it uh, works? They definitely do tour both. Okay. Uh, what's interesting from the Muskegon point of view are the visitors who come out there, and uh, just recently, friends of mine, absolutely blown away yep. because they remember the Quonset huts yep. that were out there, and no artifacts, and now... We've had, what, two, three new exhibits in the last year. We've mm -hmm. got a couple more coming. Uh, a, a person can go there uh, a couple times a year and see and learn something new as Peg, our curator, is creating these wonderful exhibits that are very, very informative. And, and the new one coming is the about nurses in World yes. War II. Peg, let's talk a little bit about the role of the nurse in World War II. Well, she's kind of the unsung hero. And when we were doing the research onto this, and we discussed and we um, talked and we interviewed uh, several of the nurses that are in this area that are still alive that had served in World War II, and the common phrase that they gave us was, but I didn't do anything. The soldier did everything. I just took care of his wounds when he came back. I was on Pearl Harbor when it was bombed, mm. and, uh, but I didn't do anything. I just took care of them. I was in the Pacific Theater. I was taking care of all their jungle-borne diseases, but I didn't do anything. The soldier is a true hero. I was in Europe, and I was bombed, and I had to dig into the trenches with my wounded soldiers. They're the real heroes, but I didn't do anything. So we've named our exhibit, but I didn't do anything, yeah. because that was the common mantra that I heard doing the research and putting in the background into this exhibit. And to be honest, I mean... The role of a nurse in a war or a doctor or any of that thing is essential. Because, it is very essential. You know, these guys are out on the front lines losing arms and legs and every other thing else. And, these, you know, I mean, how can they think that they didn't do anything? That's just so... But um, as I've talked to other female soldiers across the board, they said that their sacrifices in war were nothing like the frontline soldiers. Yeah, well, I mean, and so therefore, what we think is modesty on their part is they look at it as they served as part. Yeah. But they part of the big mission and what we failed to think about in world war ii it was a total war between all of the different nations of the world and no aspect even if you look around our own uh, our own city of muskegon how many people were involved in the war effort it became a part of every single person's life whether you were saving the scrap metal whether you worked in the factories, yep. whether you canned your own food yep. so that the soldiers would have it or you served yeah and so it's an amazing story do you think a part of their there, you know, we didn't do anything mentality. Do you think a part of that is just the generation that they that, that they came from? I mean, you know, the World War II generation has often been called mm -hmm. our greatest generation, and the people that were willing to, you know, travel the world and sacrifice everything to to keep America free and, and keep us who we are and fight that kind of you know Hitler and, and mm -hmm. Japan and all that kind of stuff going on. Do you think it's just part of their generation to have that mentality? It's part of their generation, and I've had this discussion. We are very blessed to have a volunteer, Bill Jacobs, who did the majority of the research on this. He's a retired professor from the community college, and he comes and he volunteers. And we've had this discussion whether or not it was a way to be able to come back to the real world and kind of protect yourself from yeah. all of the memories that you had by saying we didn't do anything 
or it's that selflessness that they felt as nurses because the nurses constantly are giving of themselves in your most miserable points of your life. Kind of goes for nurses in general. Yeah, all know? nurses. Yeah. And this, even though we're honoring World War II nurses, especially the Army Corps of nurses, it goes to honor all nurses and all the different selflessness that they give throughout, whether it be battle or in our own community, in our own hospitals. And it's just a tribute to all of them. Or whether they come by to see you, let's say if you're, you know, wait in line for a colonoscopy and they just want to say hi. Let's say hi. I had that happen, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Andy, look who's here. That's yeah. great. Yes. Thank yes. you, yes. nurse, for the visit. Yeah. Well, and I, in so many of the memoirs we read, one of the biggest things that they did was it not only just give the medical attention, but the care and the comfort. Sure. Hold your hand. Hold Tell your you hand. that yep. things are going to be okay. Take a young soldier, because we're remembering these soldiers are 18, 19, 20 years old. Mm. They're far away from home. They're injured. And here's a familiar face from home. Something comforting. Something comforting. Let's talk. With this exhibit opens when? It ex opens Monday evening, um, November 17th at okay. 6 p.m. Is, uh, is there a cost to get in to see? You? If you are a member, Ooh. you are getting in for free. Nice. But for anyone else in the community, it's a $5 fee. Well, five bucks. Five I mean, bucks. And that's what we normally charge for all of our Monday evening programming. It's if you're a member, it's totally free. But if you're not, it's $5 for the community members. And um, at that point, we're going to have at least one of the nurses that we're highlighting in this exhibit is coming to visit us. And how old is she now? 91. Wow. And another nurse in the ex that is highlighted in the exhibit, both of these nurses have trained here locally. They're both local women, and they've trained locally, and they got sent to the Pacific Theater. Mm. We're highlighting two other nurses. One was from Muskegon Heights, and she worked in Arizona, and she worked primarily with the POWs. And another nurse that we're highlighting was in the European Theater. And wow. they're all local Muskegon women that trained here went away and came back and lived their lives here in Michigan. Everybody's effort. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Everyone's effort. The Silver Sides. It's right down in the Muskegon Channel. If you need more information, we're going to put this all up on our webpage, muskegonradio.com. But guys, let me just tell you, you know, like we've, we've talked with our guests that have come in so far, the door's open. I mean, we are here to help, you know, show, showcase what this community is all about. Okay. And, you know, on the news, you tend to see everything that doesn't kind of go right around here. We're going to change that. We want Good. to show you what That's is going right. That's a wonderful thing. Yes. And to see uh, what you guys are doing down at the Silver Sides, especially to commemorate nurses, absolutely amazing. So, uh, Frank, Peg, thank you so much for coming in. Very good. Again, we'll have this all up online at muskeganradio.com. If you'd like to learn more about the Silver Sides, jump on board right now. And stop down for a visit, too. It's a, uh, it's a great thing to have here. Frank and Peg, thanks so much. Thank well, you. Thank you for having us. Lionel Richie, he's dancing on the ceiling. It is on Muskegon's 100.9, 820 and 44 degrees.